Frumpy, what are you doing, buddy? There's a raccoon on the other side of that. And you're probably lucky it's in a cage. Frumpy. Bob ain't dumb. Grumpy, on the other hand. Grumpy, you lay down and take a nap with a raccoon? Are you the one who's inviting him over, Grumpy? Oh, Grumpy. You better not be inviting those raccoons over. That ain't cool. Here comes Bob. Yeah, I got another one, Bob. What do you think about that? Good afternoon from Bobblehead Homestead. I am Jeff. Today is Monday. Yeah, might be Tuesday. I think it's Monday. Did I go to Mama V's yesterday or was that? I have no idea. I am so busy right now. I think today's Monday. It was a little cooler. It was only mid 80s. I think 85, sunny, no breeze, still humid. But I uh, much better that once it hits 90, the humidity is insane, and I'll I'll take days like this. Yeah, another <laughs> raccoon. Oh my goodness! But I figured out where they're coming from. Grumpy keeps inviting them over for playtime. No, uh, but seriously, I uh, word on the street that I found out yesterday. Oh, there's a little thing. I don't know if you see that bug buzzing in front of the. It's a government spy. No. Uh, word on the street that I heard yesterday. We have a raccoon lover in the neighborhood. And, uh, yeah, this crazy raccoon person is feeding them and giving them room and board and has been for a while. And when all of their pet raccoons are going missing, they started asking around to the neighbors on uh, about the raccoons, and so word on the street got back to me. Oh, uh, do not feed the raccoons. 
do not. You don't know if you, especially if you don't know who your neighbors are. I've spent four years breeding these chickens, my time and effort and investment, and uh, no joke, uh, raccoons are no joke. They will get into a flock and shred it uh, just for the fun of it. Raccoons, yeah, they got the, yeah, they're cute and blah, 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 but they will shred a flock uh, just for the fun of it and come back and do it night after night after night. Luckily, my electric fencing uh, mostly protects me. I've only lost a few chickens to predators around here, but make no mistake, raccoons are deadly. So, yeah, do not feed the raccoons. <laughs> Oh man, and I am, I'm not telling anybody else what to do with raccoons, except don't feed them. Uh, yeah, everybody's circumstances are different. You know, in most of the country, if you were to trap a la raccoon like I am, you are legally required to dispatch it. So, uh, yeah, not everybody has a vast, uninhabited national forest uh, right next to them. So... Uh, yeah, in many places of the country, uh, you cannot do what I'm doing. I'm not telling anybody what you should be doing. I'm just, uh, except don't feed them. Don't feed the raccoons. Uh, yeah, I don't think they get along with cats very well, despite uh, Bob and Grumpy over there. Especially Grumpy. But alright, that's enough of my raccoon rant. I hope, uh, I hope word gets back to whoever the crazy uh, raccoon person is to... Stop bringing predators into my yard. Ugh. Uh, all right, what else we got going on? Uh, yeah, I went to Mama V's yesterday. Met up with Mike from Dogman Homestead. I'll put a link to Mike's video up there and a link to both of their channels down in the description. But uh, yeah, Mike has a video on that. And let's go. Uh, it's Starlink related, so let's have a look at my Starlink and then I'll catch up. Starlink has an app that you need for your phone uh, in order to control it and it aims itself and it's got a built-in heater for the winter and it's all kinds of uh, groovy. So, uh, and you can see obstructed, expect an interruption every 39 seconds. So yeah, I've got some trees here and look at this part. Oh. Tap on visibility. What it does, it creates a 3D model of your property and it tells you where the obstructions are. So the blue area, it is clear, but the red area, and there's a big old tree coming up that's obstructing it. So it actually does that on its own. It will map out the, uh, you know, the visibility area and it'll tell you where your obstructions are and it'll tell you how bad the obstructions are and how often you're gonna experience uh, interruptions and stuff like that. So I've only had this going for a day. Yeah, yesterday was Sunday. <laughs> and I guess it take it took overnight for that to, to develop. So this is the first time I've seen it. But that is a pretty cool feature that it tells you what the obstructions are. I just stuck it over here real quick. Um, in addition to a built-in heater for the winter, it has a motor in there and it adjusts its angle itself. You saw that in another video. But yeah, I could probably put it on top of my Suburban or find a better place for it. But that's one cool thing about the app is you can test different areas on your property to find out where you have the least obstructions. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I got this big old tree in the way. I do have a ham radio tower, but I ain't climbing up there to put the Starlink. <laughs> but yeah, that tree is my biggest obstruction. Meeting up with Dogman Homestead and Potts Run Homestead yesterday, and I did get my uh, Starlink back because Mike got his own. Um, it's uh, There's only like half a million uh, Starlink people in the world right now. So there aren't, everybody, you can't just go out and order it and get it for yourself. There's, uh, I waited 14 months uh, before my turn came in line to get it. And that's why I went ahead and get it. Because um, 
you know, people down in the area of my new place, if they were to try to order it right now, uh, it tells them you're going to have to wait until 2023 next year. So when it became available, I had to jump on it, even though I didn't need it yet because I've got fiber optic here. But uh, so I thought I would let Dogman use it so he can give it a try to see if he might be able to get it. And then uh, through some finagling, uh, he was able to get it. That's a whole long story. But I wanted to test uh, mine out because I don't need it yet over at Possum Run Homestead. And uh, to see if Mama V could borrow it until I need it. But uh, she just, she has trees everywhere. So the obstructions were uh, just too much. And it, we, we got it to connect once uh, just for, you know, maybe a minute if that. And that was it. And then there were just too many obstructions for it to work over there. So she either needs to clear a ton of trees or uh, get a, <laughs> no, you can't have my ham radio tower. Uh, you know, get the satellite up a really, really, really tall pole or something. But, uh, so yeah, I thought I, you know, it was worth a shot. See if it worked over at her place. She could borrow it for a little while until I needed it. But it didn't work out that way. So, yeah, I hooked it up uh, here. And what it does with those obstructions is you lose your signal. Like, all, like every 15 minutes, I'll lose the signal for two or three minutes. And it's just, it's not all that reliable. So, um, but it's cool that you can map out what the obstructions are. So you can plan ahead where you're going to put that Starlink. Um, you just download the app to your phone. It does iPhone or Android, and then uh, and then you can move your phone around, and it will it will you know take pictures of the sky and tell you uh, how bad your obstructions are. So it's really cool advice. Oh, people have asked me how much it costs. It's seven hundred dollars to get started on it. That's um, that's for the equipment and uh, yeah, I guess that's just for the and taxes and shipping. I think I think it's five hundred fifty dollars and then a hundred dollar uh, down payment. I don't know. It was uh, when I signed up, I had to give them a hundred dollars, and then when they shipped it, I, it was another six hundred dollars. So it's about seven hundred bucks to get it, and then it's a hundred and ten dollars a month. Uh, which is not cheap, but that's how much Usenet costs, which was my only other option down at the new place. So it's, uh, and it's a hundred times better than Usenet satellite. Uh, it's better than my fiber optic when it, without the obstructions, when it's working fine, download speeds are like 10 times higher and the upload speeds are three times higher. So it's better than my fiber optic, um, uh, when I don't have the obstructions going on. So it's pretty cool. It's not the cheapest thing, but I need it for the new place. If I'm gonna, uh, you know, move down there and still do YouTube and and all my business operations, I really need internet that is uh, pretty much reliable and fast. Doesn't hurt. So yeah, that's enough about Starlink. What else do I got going on? Uh, baby chick parade. <laughs> I have hatched thousands of baby chicks and it's still fun. There's some cute ones in this batch. Uh, this is this batch is a special batch I'm doing for another YouTuber if they still want them. So hopefully I'll be hooking up with their channel 
in the near future and we'll be learning more about where these baby chicks are going but uh this one this batch was um they were more interested in the size of the eggs than the color of the eggs and i got no problem with that you know uh, if all you care about are lots of eggs and not having to feed them a lot go get some leghorn they lay giant eggs they're little birds and they don't eat a lot of food uh, and they lay every day so if you don't care about egg color there are lots of breeds out there that are designed for exactly what you want I'm just trying to fit in a small niche of the people who care about colorful eggs but uh, so they weren't as interested in the color of the eggs more the size of the eggs so what did I uh, I've got hens that lay really big eggs so I hatched their really big eggs and they got a nice variety uh, some white and true blues, some uh, black copper marons, uh, some blue black splash copper marons out of there, and then uh, you know like some Easter eggers and green eggers, and you know I just picked out the biggest eggs, and those were the ones that I hatched. We know that the mothers lay big eggs, so the fathers have something to do with the size of the egg. Um, I haven't tested all my roosters to know what kind of egg size genetics they have I wouldn't even know where to begin on that but uh but yeah uh you know if a hen lays a big egg there's a good chance she's going to pass that trait on to her daughter it's not a hundred percent guarantee though so a lot of variety in there she'll get a variety of egg colors and she's also going to have a variety in the the feather color of the chicken so uh yeah hopefully we'll be meeting up later this week and uh take care of some baby chicks going to a new home king of the suburban are you king of the suburban bob these are some of today's groovy eggs i really like those brown speckled ones these two are from welsmers and that one i'm not sure it might be from a moran's but uh, yeah, some nice brown speckled eggs, and I'm starting to get some nice greens too. But yeah, nice egg haul. I've been seeing birds going in and out of this birdhouse, and I think it's uh, some type of a titmouse. It's a very small, uh, very small bird. I have caught them before, but I've been trying to catch them today, and uh, I can't catch them on film. But I'll keep trying. Uh, cause cool. I might have a little bird nest going in the birdhouse. That's what I put it up for. Lots of groovy eggs. Um, actually production was down. I did some, I had six hens go to a, a new home. So I did some chicken shuffling. And when you do that, it, it stresses them out. Uh, stress is, uh, if you have chickens that they aren't laying, stress can be one of the factors that contributes to them not laying. So. You know, whether you don't have a good uh, rooster to hen ratio, um, sickness, you know, that's another thing. But uh, moving them around and just, uh, yeah, stress in general is something that I, I would prefer to avoid because it does affect their egg production. Um, usually they're back on track in a couple days, but sometimes it can take weeks before they really, especially if you're moving them to a new flock, it can take a... Uh, it can take uh, weeks for them to, you know, really adjust and get back to their uh, egg laying routine. So, yeah, that's cool. All right, I'm going to call it a day. It's been hot and sweaty, and I'm just, I'm busy with the Chicken Enterprise. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for everything, and take it easy.